Hey everyone, today's guest is Dave Pasco for the second time on the channel. Now you've seen Dave all over the interwebs, but today is gonna be, be completely different. Today we're gonna take a deep dive into Dave's uh, blood test data. And we're gonna start off with biological age and then go through uh, markers of organ systems. So kidney, liver, immune, and identify strengths, weaknesses, and all of the data on the map. So with that, welcome. And uh, I guess let's start with PhenoH. Thank you, Mike. It's great to be back again. By the way, I, I like to call this particular episode the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> nice. So you see, like in 2020, I seem to be doing a whole lot better than I, I did in like 2021. I, I show the the year. So this would be the average trend. That would be the actual pheno age. That's my, you know, 58 there was would be my chrono age at the beginning of that year. And so you can see I am uh I am increasing as the years go by but now like in 2024 2025 i'm starting my downhill slide so hopefully i can keep that trend going pretty pretty stable though i mean starting in i think yeah so 2021 it's pretty it's about 10 years younger uh all the way across like so pheno age increases by 0.9 years for every year of chronological age so starting in 2021 uh you should be you know so that's four plus years later or three and a half years later. So that should be three years older. So your average pheno age for 2025 should be 51 and a half, 52. Whereas it's still, you can see it's in the ballpark, uh, 48.6, 50. So you've, you've resisted that uh, year, year to year pheno age increase, um, even if all biomarkers stay the same. So that's good news. I mean, that's basically slowing you know, the rate of aging over time. So far, so good. I guess we'll, we'll see how, how things go in the future. The other thing to point out is how many tests that you're, this isn't one data point. So how many, what is that in 2021? How many, how many data points? How many times did you measure? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, about, yeah, roughly 12. I usually do about one test per month. So there's usually about, you know, 11, 12 data points each year. Nice. Uh, that, I mean, year to year change having more data is better so that that's great news and then what what was going on in 2024 it looks like in may through the end of the year i mean it's like one two three four five tests all going in the wrong direction yeah that i would really have to go dig to figure out what was happening with that i don't i don't know um let's think Oh, yeah, actually, I do know what was happening with that. Okay, so, because uh, I can think back to how my um, actual true diagnostic data went. It was around August timeframe that um, C.R. Clark came out to my home and did all the recording, right? And I put myself through a ton of stress because the house had just gotten remodeled. There was construction dust everywhere. I didn't know what the film crew was going to pick up. So, I mean, I just... Did a deep dive inside, outside the house, you know, fixing everything, cleaning. Um, I was really under a lot of stress. Then like October timeframe, I got COVID. Um, and so that's probably where a lot of this increased. And then we, you know, we came back down again after the new year and I'm like dropping ever since. Nice. Except for this last one. So when it, when it comes to testing, are you standardizing before a test? Like for example, um, if you're testing on a Monday, when's the last, when's your last workout? Have you standardized that test to test? Uh, no, I have not. And I do need to do that. I, I typically will test like maybe on the fifth of the month. Well, actually you can see here, sometimes it's the seventh of the month. Sometimes it's the fifth, the third. So I always try to hit closest to the beginning of the month when I can. Um, but no, I mean, now I am, I now I'm trying to standardize on like at least uh, if it's going to be a Monday, not working out at all on Sunday. Um, yeah. Trying to be more, more thoughtful about the water that I drink beforehand, you know, so that I'm not dehydrated. Because a lot of the times I was just rolling out of bed and just driving straight over and taking the test because yeah. I want to be fasted. But yeah, now I want to make sure that I've got at least some water in me so it makes the blood flow better. Uh, but it also makes the tests more, probably more accurate. So uh, have you standardized how much water or it's just just some rather than none? Uh, yeah, no, it, I have not standardized on how much. It would be just one of my, my standard mugs full of water, um, which is probably about two cups. What do so you recommend? That, so I, I do about 16 to 20 ounces. Uh, 
in that range. Uh, okay. Not more and not less. Uh, but it, I don't think the amount matters. Just as long as you get some water in there, how much you would need is debatable. Like, because, you know, for me, I can urinate it out, most of it in two hours. So I know that that's a decent amount. So if it was eight ounces, maybe I wouldn't urinate any of it out in two hours. So maybe that would be an you know, insufficient amount. So it sounds like two cups is enough, 16 ounces in your case. So um, the other factor though, is the fasting window. So, um, you know, so what's recommended is generally overnight fast, but is, is, there, is there an introduction of variability in the blood test data if you fast eight hours, 12 hours, 16 hours? Um, That's a great question. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and I'm not eating the same food every day either. So that's more, even more variability. Yeah. So are, are there plans to, you know, note the fasting window or, <laughs> or because if that is, so, so if, you know, imagine if some of your data is impacted by maybe one test you fasted for a shorter versus longer duration, um, then it's harder to know what may move the, move the needle, right? When it may have just been the fasting window. Um, I, I generally have a core diet that I stick to day before the test, even though, you know, for the 40 to 50 day period before, um, there may be more variability in diet, but for definitely the day before the test, there I do have a core diet that I basically stick to so that it's not previous day diet that's messing up or impacting biomarkers, but... I don't know, just, just an idea. Just, no, just... That, that's a brilliant idea. I never actually considered that. That's why I love what you do, because what you do is, I mean, of all the um, influencers that claim they're doing science, you are the one that truly is doing science. science. The rest of us are just sort of, you know, hackers, which, so I've been sort of hacking around at this, not uh, not maybe being as intentional as I could be. So I, I think I'm going to take your advice and do that moving forward. Cool. Try to figure out some meal that I'm going to make as my standard that I'll do before the test. Yeah, at least the core so that, you know, yeah. All right. So so let's, can we deep, can we do a deep dive into phenoage's components? So the biggest predictor of phenoage is RDW. So maybe starting there and seeing how that's changed over time. So let's go to, well, what are we looking for? So we're looking for, yeah, R blood health, right? Yep. R yeah. Okay. Let's generate that. Okay. So, and wait real quick. I think it's, I think it's important for people to know that like, there's this idea of cherry picking your best data and then saying that this is your rate of aging, or this is your biological age, or this is your marker of organ health and only doing it like once per year. But is that really, this is Mike on the diatribe, right? On the soliloquy, but is that really representative of your true data? Like how many, how many tests would one need to get an accurate representation of year to year change for a biomarker, for biomarkers of organ systems, for biological age, et cetera, right? So, I mean, you've got more data than me in, in some cases. So, you know, I, this illustrates, you know, tracking as much as you can and then looking at year, year to year change. You, you can imagine if we did this like Brian Johnson does and pick our best value out of the past two years of each of these different, you know, <laughs> each of these different markers and then present that all in one spreadsheet for people to say, look, look how great I am. The, the sad thing, the sad thing about that is like, and the thing is, I'm still torn on Brian. Sometimes I listen to him and it's like, he's saying all the right things. And then I see the other side where people are just attacking him for things. And then he calls them bad actors, but he doesn't actually address the thing that he's being challenged on, which. Because he can't, that's the problem. So then it's like, is it malicious intent or is it outright ignorance? I, I don't know which. Yeah, I I, who knows? I mean, we can't guess what's going on in somebody else's mind, but it certainly doesn't look good. Yeah. And then it's like, if it is, if the idea is to cherry pick one's best data, and then so many people are going to follow that approach and think that that's how we should be slowing aging and, and you know, potentially yeah. slowing disease risk and max maximizing longevity. I mean, how many people are going to be led astray? You know what I mean? So... Um, that's that's why I really love that you showed your blood work the other day, and we're going to show mine now, just to show people that real blood work is messy. It's all over the place. Nothing is perfect. You know, so if, if somebody presents a, a front that, you know, everything they do is just perfect and right on, on par, they're probably not being honest. Yeah, for sure. I, I've got weak spots. I've got like some eczema going on on my eyelid and my lip now. 
Uh, and I'm still trying to figure out what's going on there. And for people who don't know, I've got the glasses on for the first time. And this is a new thing that I just, you know, initiated about a month ago. So, all right. So RDW, let's start off with uh, RDW. It's, it's the biggest predictor of um, phenoage. Here we go, right here. Yeah. Can we zoom in just on that one and and sure. and move the other ones or move that to a separate... You know, I was going to create the drop down so that I could just generate one at a time, but I unfortunately I didn't get that implemented in time for our. Oh, no worries. No worries. Here. So is that, uh, how is that? Yeah. Is the show decent yeah. on your oh, end? Yeah. Perfect. 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 So luckily my trend isn't like super steep, but I do, I am trending as an increase, which is why the, the heading is in red. So if I'm trending in the direction of aging, it's, it shows in red. If I'm trending in the direction, the opposite direction of aging, it's showing in the head, the title in green. So. All right, wait, that's, that's, I'm a little bit confused, Dave. So, because the red lines are parallel. No, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, the title, if the title is in red, that means I'm, this black trend line is trending in the direction of aging. So I'm going in the wrong way, the wrong right, direction. That's, that's a very mild trend. I mean, granted, looks pretty flat, you know, so the black line is your trend line. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, and pretty... you can see I'm within the reference ranges here, the, but, the two red lines are the top and bottom of the reference range, but my optimal, my optimal is like really, really tight. Uh, my optimals are down here. So this is really where I would like to be in this right. range. So wait, so that's, that's a good point to illustrate. So how are you determining? So your optimal is different from mine. So how are you determining optimal for just RDW in this case? So I would have to go back to my reference table, which is going to be like an eye chart for you guys. Um, so let's see, RDW, this is alphabetized. Um, a lot of my data I cross-referenced with yours, with other stuff that I'd received like from other um, you know, books and podcasts that I listened to. And of course, you know, even using some chat GPT to, to look into stuff. So... RDW, here's uh, the reference range for uh, lab core was 11.6 to 15.4. Yeah. I can, I can zoom in on this if you can't see that. Yeah, that's a wide range. But your optimal range, your specific... What My optimal range, I set that between like 8.1 to 12.5. But why that specific? Do you know where, where you... Or it's just an accumulation of... So let's see if I actually included that here. Yeah, because I think it was a little bit different on the plot. Um, hmm. Increases with aging. Definitely up. Interesting. It should not be different in my plot, but let's see. So 8.1 to 12.5. And let's go back to the plot. Um, uh, that's what was throwing me off. I think the upper upper limit on your range. Can you zoom it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your green, the green upper limit on the green was like 12.7. It was like eight to 12.7. That, yeah, it just seems a little bit high. Yeah. Not seems, but so 11, I think off the top of my head, 11.4 to 12.6. And that's based on all cause mortality risk. And then obviously increases during aging. That's my optimal range there. It can be tricky though, below 11.4. Um, even though that's a rare event in terms of, uh, how many people have RDWs that low? There is a significant increase for all-cause mortality risk below 11.4, but the paper that I'm referencing, it, um, it didn't differentiate where below 11.4, like it separated everybody who was 11.4 into um, percentiles. So there's just no way to know where below 11.4 that increase in all-cause mortality risk was. But nonetheless, that's a rare thing. Most people don't have RDW below uh, 11.4. Yeah, I'm a little puzzled because usually on my reference table, I'll have the uh, the reasoning why I set um, my optimal range is where I did. But for RDW, I don't have that. So I couldn't even tell you where I got those optimal values from. Interesting. All right. So wait, so your average then is somewhere around 13. That's about what it looks like. Yeah. And I mean, then... this, this would be my trend line, which I guess is uh, is plotted on my average, I think. So. Yeah, so I'm between yeah. twelve point seven and thirteen point seven. Yeah, maybe thirteen point two. Then maybe somewhere in the middle. So yeah, there too. You had a bunch of data points that were higher, and then you've had lately. You've they, you know they've all been a lot better. So 
any ideas what you you may have done to flip that? Uh, no, <laughs> no, actually, I don't, um, because I, I don't know what uh, what supplements I've been modifying that would have impact on RDW. To be totally honest with you, it's not something I've been targeting. So its movement is a, a side effect of other things that I've been doing. It's not nothing intentional that I've been doing to move RDW. Interesting. And, you know, whatever you did, because you can see that, the, what is that, 3, 5, 8, 10, I mean, 13, 14, 14 above your average, and then almost all of it below that, you know. So whatever you did, what is that, 2021 to 2023, whatever you did there, whatever you changed, I mean, it's made a big dent in bringing it down. So that's good news. Yeah. I, you know, I do have, um, there's, a, there's different tabs for um, every blood test, all of the things that I was targeting for the next test. But I mean, that would probably take us a good 10 minutes for me to drill down and see what it was that I was doing at those particular times. But off the top of my head, I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> see, if, if, if there was a way that you could drill down on what may have been behind that RDW decrease, I mean, that's like, you know, most people struggle, I think, with RDW and bringing it down and it, that it increases during aging and that for, you know, the, the majority of, you know, what it, whatever that is, the past 15 tests relative to the 15 tests before that, that you've gotten to it to go in the right direction. I mean, I think that's big news. It's just a matter of what may have caused it is, you know, is, is the big question. In your case, it's yeah. not that you got leaner, right? I mean, you've been Relative, your body yeah. weight and workouts have been relatively stable, which suggests that it's got to be something supplement or diet wise. Yeah. Or exercise, maybe. Um, more fit versus less fit or less fit in the above average data and more fit now. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. I probably could drill down, you know, into that data, but it would take me some time to do the investigation. Yeah. yeah. One reason I make all the videos I make is because it forces me to try to figure it out and then try to tell that story. So I, I'm not saying that's what you should do, but it's just, you know, an interesting observation that I think many people could, you know, benefit from. Yeah. I mean, now I'm super curious because I, before we started talking, I didn't have any of this stuff graphed. So I, I really didn't have this nice pictorial view of my own data to be able to see, am I going in the right direction or not? Um, so this has helped me quite a bit now that I can see this. So I, I can be intentional about things. My RDW, I thought was usually so stable that I've never had any intention of moving it intentionally. So. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. But you, but then after you plotted it, you could see that you had some variability where it was, you know, and, and yeah. that's not like one test where it's above your average. I mean, that was a lot of tests and then not the test below. Right. So something really moved the needle there. So, yeah. So now I'll be curious to drill down and find that out for myself. Yeah. And wait, so the most recent data would probably be, I mean, it's below that 12.7. So probably around 12.6, right? Somewhere around there. I mean, we can actually go to the real data if you want to see yeah. that. Go to the most, for the most recent tests. Okay. So but the most recent test that you have, uh, I guess, what, three tests so far in 2025? Uh, yes, yes. So, so we're looking okay. at 12.7, 12.4, 12.9. And not bad, not bad. And then, wait, wait, so so I've, got, I've got four tests. Actually, four. I've got two of them here from uh, February because one I did with Life Extension and the other one I did with Alta Labs. So. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, not, not too bad. I mean, I'd want to see it 12.5, even closer to 12, but it's a lot better than the probably 13 or 14 that you had, you know, uh, two years before that.